So I had talked about how much I enjoy riding the Sherman S. But this week, we're going to put it through the ultimate test by pitting it against two of its toughest competitor, the 134 volt, 50 miles per hour speedster, the Pico Master, and my prior favorite suspension wheel, the King Song S22, plus the infamous New York City wheel demo, Road Andro! And please hit that like button and appease the Google algorithm god and help get this video to a larger viewing audience and grow the EUC community. Speaking of which, I'm also finally launching my EUC accessory shop, the MOSFET. Check out the link for the site below for my review of the E-Ride pedals, which is my current favorite aftermarket accessory. Knowing that my time with it is short, I've been riding the Sherman S whenever I can. I can tell from the many comments I have received on my last video, everyone is thinking of the same question. How does the Sherman S stack up to the other flagship suspension electric unicycle? And thanks to the active EUC community here in New York City, shout out to Ronan and Ty, I managed to get my hand on both. But before we get to that, there is the New York City Sherman S demo, and this time we're holding it at Flushing Meadow Park, the formal 1930 world fairground appropriately the world of tomorrow Roll look at the intro. this man stuffing his oh, face <laughs> that's that better be in there man <laughs> that's actually not Sheldon. bad Let's see if i can lift it with one hand there you go. oh strong guy bodybuilder bodybuilder <laughs> What are you oh, doing with this yeah. thing? I'm digging holes. Are you no, climbing yeah, trees with it? Yeah. <laughs> so what'd you think? Definitely nice. Oh my god. I love this handle right here. Seated is amazing. Yeah, it's buttery. It's so nice. And the tire, I mean, the tire is shit, but it kind of feels good once you get used to the car. Feels really good. Awesome wheel. I think I will definitely sell my Sherman. I'm loving the way that suspension feels out of all the suspension wheels I've tried. This one definitely takes the cake. The takeoff is pretty good too. Uh, definitely better than the Sherman Max. How long have you been riding the Sherman? I've been riding the Sherman for like about three, maybe three, yeah, oh, three years. Oh, so you, you, you like, I really you love, know that I really wheel. Love my Sherman. You're sold? I, I'm sold. I'm definitely <laughs> sold. I was, I was inquiring about the EX30 and waiting to see how that goes, but Considering how the suspension is just specifically tailored for this wheel and made, made the way it is, I think I'm more inclined to stick with Sherman. I really liked it. What? I like this. I'm not sure exactly. I think that I, I think I just like the carving on it. I didn't actually think that I would like the carving on it at all. Carving on most suspension wheels is. And it was like I don't know. It felt real real stable for the. I I know like you're saying it's heavy, but I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was really nice. It's like kind of like the perfect in between that I've been looking for between like the master, which has like no battery at all, and um, and the M Pro. How does it compare to the? Wait, you have a master or a master pro? Both. Compared to the master, the suspension is way better. You know, I'm not going to talk about speed because that's obviously like a that's like a straightaway like okay, obviously the master is going to win, but no, it's bad. compared to the master pro. Dude, Master Pro suspension is garbage. It's 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 like it is. It's garbage. It's, it's like you you buy the Master Pro to like get on the Whitestone Bridge and get to the Bronx faster than anyone else. It's the best suspension I've had. Like I've tried. How does it compare to your German Sherman? Oh, um, I'm selling both my Shermans for this, so that probably says a lot. <laughs> <laughs> you have two Sherman and you're yeah. selling them both. Yeah. Just to get the Sherman S. Yeah. I think they're obsolete. Like once you get this. Holy damn. You know? Really? Because that. Why? That was your you favorite back? wheel. It you're is. You're gonna say this about the wheel that has. Faithfully this is not going on YouTube or anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the weight because I'm too lightweight for that wheel. Yeah? I'm 120, that wheel is 100, so... <laughs> you only got... That tells our... Yeah, I... I They're I too have, light. 
Yeah, I'm too. You have to eat more work. fried chicken. That's the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I definitely see that being superior than that, even with some ma. Like, but that will like that's like 70 ish pounds, so it's like below 75 percent of my whole weight. Do more deadlifts. That's super manageable for me. Uh, okay. That will I mean, is also is way higher off yeah, I mean, than so that will. Even that will is at a higher level. The pedal is low on yeah, that by so comparison. That, but overall, it's nice. It's super stable. Though. I like it a lot. And also, it's surprising that the shock doesn't cut into the thigh, unlike the, the housing on that. It's a nice wheel. It's a nice wheel. Damn, you just got me into that strap now. You can do it. I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling myself not to be interested. <laughs> you know, you know you're gonna end up buy one. <laughs> Maybe back next year, I'm most likely. <laughs> See, you're gonna slowly pull that in. You'll be like, oh, maybe next I year. I just got that <laughs> too, mom, man. <laughs> <laughs> so the Sherman S made it past out of the most die-hard EUC riders with flying color, but the question remains, how does it stack up to its toughest competitors? Allow me to reintroduce the master, the 80-pound, 134-volt speedster from Bagot, the artist formerly known as Gatway. <laughs> this wheel is the end result of a two-year search after releasing multiple unsuccessful models, the EX, the EX20S, the Hero. This is the one that finally stuck the landing. And the thing that pushed it over the top is the world's very first 134 volt electrical system with an incredible top speed of 55 miles per hour. And why higher voltage is so very attractive is that like a high pressure super soaker, it lets you pump a whole lot more electrum, which translates directly to more torque, more power, and of course, higher top speed. At the cost of lower range, especially since it only carries 2400 watt hour worth of battery power. If you're someone who pushed your wheel really hard, you may get as little as 15 miles out of this wheel and that's about it. But it's a compromise that actually made a lot of sense to a lot of riders since less battery means lesser weight as well as cost. And the original $2,800 price tag on the Master, I think hit a bit of a sweet spot for a lot of people. But in the end, it always comes down to the ride. So let's take the Master out and see how it's stacked up. Just to give you a bit of a context, I've been riding the Sherman S for the past week and a half. So I'm fully acclimated to that wheel. And I just picked up the Master, and this is the 2000 watt hour, so smaller battery, but higher discharge version. So that means that it will be able to hold on to that top end speed better, um, even when it is running low. The initial impression of the differences, the suspension is definitely softer. The progression on the Sherman S is a lot different towards the end versus this feels like it would bond now quite easily if I were to hit a pretty large bump. No surprise to anyone that this wheel has a lot more power. I had said that I thought on the lower end, the Sherman S should be able to hold up. Now that I'm trying this wheel again, it is definitely more powerful, even at a slower speed like this. I'm probably doing 25 right now. You get a lot more pickup, even from like zero. And it's helpful in situation like this, where I'm on the side of the road about to merge into traffic, having a wheel with a lot of acceleration definitely help because that means I can leave a little bit less room to catch up to full car speed. Since this being New York City, ain't no one else gonna slow down just cause you look like you're ill prepared for the road. And overall the wheel feels significantly lighter as compared to the Sherman S, partly due to the fact that it is actually lighter, but also partly because it has simply has a lot more power. The Master feels effortless at speed around 25, 30 miles per hour. Because of that, you don't have to lean as hard you probably remember me grunting from us trying to accelerate on the Sherman S. This just kind of go.
is probably the most attractive quality of the master and there's nothing wrong with that especially in situations like when you're sandwiched between a large bus and a really eager driver trying to overtake in the back Ooh. all right that's we'll have to talk about that and the problem was stability i really was never able to quite identify it because for a long time most suspension wheel exhibit the same issue and that is lateral flex the reason why carving a wheel and that is going back and forth what you're doing is artificially generating centripetal force pulling the wheel outward as you come around the outside of that curve while you're pressing the wheel to resist that centripetal force sandwiching the wheel into this narrow track and position to increase its overall stability which in turn get rid of wobbles and any other kind of adverse wheel movement any misalignment between the direction you're going and the orientation of your wheel is terrible and it's definitely noticeable like just now when i hit that bump i could definitely feel the fring of the wheel flex so for high speed situation like this there's this slight vagueness that you feel from the wheel if i start to try to carve right now the wheel is lagging behind my motion and not exactly in sync with where i want it to be <sighs> all right let's figure out what's going on here when you look at the master as compared to the sherman s they all seem relatively similar controller pen on the top battery compartment on the side central piston connecting the axle to the rest of the wheel so what seems to be the problem when you hit a pothole the force translates to the rest of the wheel via the axle let's see the axle is like here now the side panel on the master is configured like a capital i you have a horizontal battery mounting bracket on top and then another one on the bottom to receive the bottom end of the battery and the axle is actually mounted to this silver slider piece which rides up and down along this stainless tube when the force is acting this way the entire side of this wheel will want it to bend a lot more arrows Everything behind the axle would be in tension as it try to stretch out to accommodate the bend. Everything in front of the axle would be in compression, opposite of what's happening in the back. On the Sherman S, you have a whole magnesium side panel, not only to protect the battery, but also to act as a structural chassis against all these acting forces. On the Master, well, the only thing you have on either side of the actual slider is the battery pack and considering that these are actually made out of very thin plastic shells battery pack is actually providing the structural support and that is not really an ideal situation again i'm only talking about flex doing extreme conditions combination of high speed and bad road surfaces and for someone riding at 20 30 miles per hour it's not likely terribly noticeable but then again we aren't exactly buying the bago master for casual slow rides either are we which bring us to contender number two and in this corner we have the s22 the 77 pound 126 volt electric unicycle from king song their very first foray into the round of the high voltage high performance euc market and the launch has unfortunately not gone smoothly for king song there was the very public fire the sticky slider and the motor stator slip problem but i do have to say that in the end the s22 remains one of my favorite wheel to ride this particular example also has the nylon love pedal as well as the latest aftermarket six roller slider mod install which means that the suspension is going to work a lot better as compared to a stock wheel and with its aluminum battery casing which the pedal is also mounted to similar to the sherman s should provide a stiffer ride enough talk it's time to ride the s22 so it's been a while since i rode the s22 the right feel is very different it is running the stock coil shock 
so it's not full hydraulic rather that it is partial this is also a lighter feeling wheel as compared to the sherman s it is running a 3300 watt motor at 126 volt theoretically only a 10 percent increase it is also super windy i hope you can actually hear what i'm saying let me get out of the wind off of this bridge all right a little bit better the wheel feels a whole lot lighter and speedier both acceleration and torque feels better and also there is a pretty unique feel to this wheel the motor feedback is kind of springy like i feel like i can't like torque it and have it kind of bounce back there's a little bit of rubber bending with how this wheel accelerates. It is a lighter wheel. It's only 77 pounds. It's likely part of its speed advantage because it's really pushing a lot less weight. There is just an overall springiness and it is fast. It has a max speed of 46 miles per hour. That is when it starts to be if it's set up properly, <laughs> but it feels nimble springy this is actually nicer than uh, what i remember because honestly i wasn't very kind of hopeful for this wheel of course my last memory of the wheel was it blowing up in my face <laughs> definitely a very nice ride it's very light and it has enough of a oomph and i kind of really like that rubber banding effect definitely something unique it's also a little bit of gruntiness to the engine note it really growl when you're laying down to it out of all the different engine feel i like the this one the most that growly like rrr, really is very nice the other factor overall wheel stiffness and stability it's really really windy today a lot of time on the master when it gets really windy there's this really squirrely unsettled feel when you get hit by a gust it pushes you around the wheel just feels very unstable on this it feels tight and nice no issues before the sherman s this was my favorite suspension of all time because there's just this general sense of evenness and predictability with the s22 when you hit something the wheel doesn't twist doesn't bend doesn't do anything funky and it's very flickable it's very kind of like and when you lean in it gives you speed whoa that 126 volt definitely comes into play it is a little bit wider this actually feels surprisingly wider than the sherman s even though the sherman s have those beefy shocks on either end of it you really kind of have to ride this wheel a bit bull-legged try not to go crazy and be polite to the other bicyclists on the road but man <laughs> That is fun. Kind of forgot how the S22 feels. The suspension is stiffer in general. I think the coil is set pretty hard here. It's not as smooth as the Sherman S. Try to see if I feel any flex. No, I don't feel any flex. Only in that springy way that I had mentioned. Very predictable. Yeah, really a big bump is still coming through. But the speed of this wheel is wonderful. At the lower end, from zero to like 20, this wins. This is faster. But once you get up to 30, this is, it's the same. It's kind of like, this doesn't have a huge advantage over the Sherman. 
um, just that you don't have to lean as hard on it getting up to 30. Once you're at 30, like right here, um, it's about the same. All right already, it's time to get to the conclusion. And I gotta say, this was not an easy contest to call because even after I made my conclusion, <laughs> like riding the S22, my final run coming back to drop the wheel off on the First Avenue was probably some of the most fun I ever had with that wheel. Like the sense of just agility, bounciness, and stability combined with speed was just so much fun. But even that in the end, I don't think would change my mind about which wheel is my favorite and this ain't just talk and i'm backing this up because i've been wanting to buy a new electric unicycle for some time but whatever i pick will be my next euc purchase first off we got the master this is by far and away the fastest electric unicycle of the three whether it be torque acceleration or top speed this wheel is the winner its speed translates to a sense of lightness that you don't get with the other two wheels. But the suspension and overall rigidity is just okay and cannot be relied on. You'll always cringe when you hit a really big pothole and the wheel bumps out on you. And you'll always get that shiftiness when you ride at high speed. And you would never be able to fully lean to the wheel and push it to its limit like you can with the Sherman S. Then we have the S22, a slightly lighter and faster wheel. Its suspension and rigidity is a noticeable improvement as compared to the Master. It isn't on par with the Sherman S, but I do have to say that it comes close. However, the fact that it requires an aftermarket mod just to function optimally and to match the performance of a stock Sherman S, not to mention the myriad of production issues that this wheel had experienced ever since the beginning. And although I do have to emphasize that I enjoy the way this wheel rides immensely, the fact that it doesn't really excel in any particular area is both its strength and weaknesses. So this is it. I had made my decision. I'm going to go with the Sherman S. And what it really comes down to, as someone who pushes their wheel really, really hard, now that I had a taste of what it's like to have an uncompromised sense of control and stability, I, I can't go back to anything less. So where do you land amongst these three mighty electric unicycles and which one would you choose? Well, that is what the comment section below is for and you know what? Aha! I somehow managed to trick you into wasting another, oh my god, 30 minutes of your life, but I hope you enjoyed it. Shout out to my supporter on Patreon. Please check out the links in the video description below if you enjoy and like to support my work. And as always, as much as we all love Electric Unicycle, the only way for us to get better wheel is to grow as a community. So tell your friend, teach them how to ride, and get them hooked. Until the next video, thank you.